Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Great for having me here. And uh, need to fix my technology here before I start. Yeah, so good day. And uh, I'm pleased to be here today. And uh, thanks to our friends from the Open Forum Europe uh, for having me and for bringing us all together. And thanks to Deputy Prime Minister Bartosz about the creation of the Czech National uh, Open Source Program Office, as well as the Digital Agency. Absolutely appreciate it. Our friends, our colleagues uh, in Brno, where we have our largest, um, our largest engineering center in, uh, uh, of Red Hat, absolutely excited about this collaboration uh, to work with you and to uh, have this joint journey together. You mentioned a couple of areas around upskilling and uh, the need of bringing people to the next level. So I'm just arriving back from Dublin, where we had uh, the full week of bringing our go-to-market organization, our technical organization, together, so more than 2,000 people, to work on this upskilling and, uh, and further um, yeah, activities in order to, to bring that to the market. So as we join together here today for the OFE's EU Policy Summit and tomorrow's FOSDEM weekend, we can look forward to an exciting year where open source is the catalyst of innovation in both core markets, such as public sector, FSI, telco, and new concepts like edge computing in manufacturing and energy, automotive and other transport areas are going to be fueled by the energy of the community in open source. We are living in a world full of both peril and promise. You mentioned the war in the Ukraine, it continues and we see continued strains in the global supply chain with physical assets, but also on the software side. And the world economic outlook continues to shift rapidly. Europe's strength in collaboration and citizen-centric principles have taken center stage in the global discussion, fundamentally changing the debate about how we build and deploy technologies for people's need. Decisions made today will fundamentally influence not only how technology is brought to market, but the relationship between the creators and the consumers. And these technologies for, will change for decades to some across all sectors in Europe. We continue to see Europe's leadership in the latest default to open policy proposals before us, such as the Interoperable Act, uh, Europe Act. Why we hear more about this proposal from the Commissioner Hahn um, later in our program, the outlook for the open source software and open standard is clear. These technologies support user autonomy, independence, and reversibility. By their nature, open source software and open standards enable interoperability that catalyzes both innovation and collaboration. Simultaneously, it provides citizens with, with the mechanisms and transparency necessary to understand many complex software systems that impact our lives day to day and thereby close the gap between the regulator and the regulated, the provider and user, as well as the contributor and user. So when we discuss digital sovereignty, it is clear that transparency and openness are essential to create trust. Open source, at least to me, seems to be the natural choice. We have seen strong recognition of open source as a global commons under the previous Czech uh, EU presidency, with a similar approach undertaken now by the current Swedish EU presidency, as well as Spain in the second half of this year. And we make choices about how we will bolster this global commons. And the rules of engagement between ourselves, we are fundamentally called upon to support it from our policy perspective, also from the computer perspective, um, and from all of us. So what is it for us to contributing in order to this um, global commons. If we are not creators, at least of the software, 
how are we supporting the ecosystem in order to build a sustainable and thriving environment? How do our actions create mutual benefit, improve the technology, state of the art, and improve respective bottom lines? I think you have seen this data because that's the exact same data I showed last time I was able to present here, unfortunately only online um, and from a different continent. But uh, this data will not be a surprise to anyone, I guess. Um, at this, fortunately, and we can look to uh, some of the contributions and discussions later on to hopefully have a little bit of new data uh, during, during this uh, event today. But um, what is clear to both long-standing practitioners of open source and born out of the European Commission study from 2021, open source is a fundamental enabler of economic growth and an engine of innovation. When the best possible ideas can come from anyone and the solution to global challenges can be produced anywhere, the resulting collaborations will always drive forward the technical state of the art and empower those engaged in the act of co-creation. As mentioned already, we welcome the Interoperable uh, Europe Act, which articulates very well why open source is critical for Europe's recovery, transformation, and global competitiveness. It is user, are autonomous and independent, it mitigates cybersecurity risks and login effects, and it has the best return on the investment for public money. Indeed, there are other EU regulations, such as the Data Act, which we also see as vital establishing the underpinning policy foundations to ensure that open source is fully empowered to unleash all of its positive effects. And yet, we also see that there is still a lot of work to be done in order to make sure that we are mitigating the unintended consequences of policies around open innovation. While open source development practices are an understood catalyst for innovation, we are seeing the recent growth of Europe, in Europe of the open source program offices, or OSPO. While OSPOs have long been a feature of large technology companies, we have seen this construct emerge as a mechanism for supporting the growth of open source as a change agent within industries who are just starting to, on their open source journeys, in particular within public sector bodies and across academia. OSPOs are charged with a clear mandate for bidirectional advocacy, both within the organization, establishing norms for engaging with open source projects and championing open source practices, and externally on the organizations, ensuring that work in a particular community serves the interests of that community, its participants, and their outputs to end users. It is noteworthy that each of these OSPOs cited on this slide were created within the last two and a half years. With the rise of the OSPOs as me mechanism to support and extend collaboration across Europe, we find ourselves in an inviolable position of being able to create software for ourselves and for the world, but also to embed European values into the architecture of these systems from the get-go. Values such as human-centered design, transparency, fairness, and accountability are not afterthoughts as to how systems are built and should work, but essential questions before we begin to architect the software itself. How we export European values through our software creations and do so in a way that is compatible with open source practices is once again an important question for us on this journey. Let us work together to create a virtual ground for our values to take root across the globe. I hope I make up some of the time from my uh, <laughs> predecessor here, but uh, I mean, just to recap, 
digital sovereignty, open source, and open standards are a natural combination. Open source continues to grow as a market that delivers growth in revenue, jobs, and solution. So thank you all for your time and uh, having me here today on board, and I wish you a good conference.